Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from Not The Commander's Core Studio. If you haven't seen most recent episodes yet, yeah, I'm on the road right now, so I'm using my road setup, so if my microphone sounds just a little bit off, that's why. Regardless, thank you for bearing with me. And today's episode comes to you courtesy of my amazing patrons. Once a month, those patrons are going to be voting on what commander that they'd like to see in an upcoming episode. And the commander that gets most votes wins. And the commander on this episode is Nashi Moon's Legacy, an incredible Saltai commander, a 3 4 rat shaman with Menace in Ward 1. Whenever Nashi attacks, you exile up to one target legendary or rat card from your graveyard and copy it. You can cast the copy. You're still paying those costs, but still, that is a lot of extra value to be able to cast a card out of your graveyard. And yeah, you can go Rat or Legendary Tribal. I chose to go Legendary Tribal. There's a lot of really, really good Legendary cards in Salta that we can really take advantage of with this. And of course, with this deck, well, yeah, there's a lot of great budget ones as well because, yeah, this is a budget-friendly deck with every single card in it, including the Commander being less than $1. So again, this, this very budget-friendly deck is now just, according to Moxfield, $27.83. So if you are interested in this deck, make sure you check out that deck. Let's link in the description below. And yeah, with all that said, let's jump into the tactics. First up, there's Wayfarer's Bobble. Go get a basic in a play. Tap by paying two and tap and sacrificing this amazing card. And uh, yeah, moving on. Speaking of two, Rampant Growth, the OG ramp. We've got Hey Pay One and a Green for that sorcery. Get that basic into play tapped as well. Then we've got Edge of Autumn, basically the exact same thing, but with a slight restriction. If you control four fewer lands, that's when you go do that. And later on in the game, though, this can also be very useful by cycling it away by sacrificing a land. Next up, Cultivate. Go get two basics. One goes in your hand, one goes into the play tapped. And yeah, it's a great way to not only ramp, but a way to set yourself up for your next land drop. Speaking of which, we've got Harrow. Harrow is another way to get two basics. This time, though, we sacrifice one land to get two basics into play untapped so we can utilize that mana right away. Then there's Entish Restoration. Sacrifice a land, search your life for the two basic cards, put them on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. But if you've got a creature with power four or greater, and we've got plenty of those, you get three of those instead. Next up, Kodama's Reach. Basically another cultivate essentially for this deck and finally budget friendly with its reprint in Commander Masters. And then we got Search for Tomorrow. It might cost three, but also it's a great turn one play because it's got to spend two for a single green mana. Go get a basic land into play untapped. So again, a fantastic turn one play. Finally, we've got Migration Path. Go get those two basics into play tapped, or you can cycle it away for two mana. But now let's move on to tactic number two, Ramp and Reduce. We're gonna start things off with Zamone, a fantastic legendary creature that has pay one tap on a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped, or pay four tap, draw a card. If you control eight or more lands, draw two cards instead. Yeah, this can be fantastic ramp for us and fantastic card advantage as well. And getting eight lands in play is going to be no big deal. Moving on, a Rixmithy Slumbering Isle. Basically an explosive vegetation as a legendary creature. It's going to come into play tapped as a land, basically, with five slumber counters on it. It can tap for green and blue. And also, whenever you're casting spells, remove counters from it. And it can become a 12-12 creature, essentially, that can be board dominating. Speaking of dominating, we've got Goreclaw, Terror of Calcisma, a Power Matters card. 4-3 bear. Creature spells with power 4 or greater cost 2 less. So yeah, it can reduce the cost of a lot of our creatures. And whenever it attacks each other creature you control with power 4 or greater, it gets plus plus 1 and gains trample until end of turn. So that can be very valuable as well to well, pump and get some damage through. Next up, we've got Ingen Essica, a fantastic card for this deck as well. 4-4, four, four, so there's 4 power as well. Creatures control Vigilance and tap at 1 main of any color. Spanish so mana only cast a creature spell. And yeah, we've got a ton of legendary creatures. Basically, this turns all our creatures into fantastic mana dorks. And on top of that, whenever you cast a creature spell, if 3 or more mana from creatures are spent to cast it, draw a card. So this can also provide even more card advantage as well. Finally, we've got Thrix the Sudden Storm. This won't ramp us, but it will reduce as well. Flash Flying spells you cast with converted mana cost 5 or greater cost 1 less and can't be countered. So it's a great way to protect our bigger spells and also make them cost less too. Mm -hmm. 
But now let's move on to tactic number three, legend, wait for it, Derry. So first up we've got Instrument of the Bards, a great card. Basically you get harmony counters on it, you can pay three and a green and tap it, and for those number of harmony counters on it, go get a creature from your library that equals that mana cost essentially into your hand. If it's legendary, make a treasure token. Here's the thing, we've got a ton of legendary creatures, so yeah, not only great tutoring, but great you know, temporary ramping as well. Next up, we've got Kamal's Juridic Val, an amazing card, basically a Genesis way for legendaries and lands. Dump a ton of mana into this, get a lot of legendaries and lands directly into play off the top of your library. Moving on, Mirror of Gladriel. Pay two for this, and it's an amazing artifact. It does have an active ability that does cost mana, but it might not. Pay five, tap, scry one, then draw a card. It's gonna cost one to activate for each legendary creature you control. Um, again, that can just be zero, because we can have five legendaries in play, and this can just be a free, fantastic effect for us. Moving on, Rona, Herald of Invasion. Hurry cast a legendary spell, untap it. We've got a ton of legendaries, so we can keep on tapping this. It's gonna tap and have us draw a card and discard a card, so a great looting effect. We can also transform it, and it says, whenever a source deals damage to Rona, that source control exiles a card from their hand at random. It's a land card you can put on the battlefield. Otherwise, you may cast paying its mana cost, so this could also just be a good effect for you as well, and a very deadly creature. Next up, Crown of Gondor. Equipped creature gets plus one for each creature you control that can be a ton. On top of that, whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, if there is no monarch, you become the monarch. Equip four, it's gonna cost three to activate if you're the monarch. Um, yeah, again, we've got a ton of legendaries. This is a great way to just keep getting the monarch back again and again and again, on top of just while well, pumping a creature a lot. Next up, Lorth of the Healing House, a one for human cleric. Tap, untap another target permanent, so it's a great way to eventually ramp. Or also, hey, tap, untap two of the target legendary creatures as well. That can be just absolutely massive. And yeah, moving on, we've got the Peregrine Ammo, a way to really take advantage of a lot of our activated triggered abilities from our legendary permanents. Hey, pay one, tap, copy, target, activate your triggered ability control from a legendary source. That's not a commander. You may choose a tar new targets for the copy. So yeah, again, we've got an absurd amount of legendary sources that this can really take advantage of. Next up, Kolvari, God of Kinship. A 2-4 God, that's gonna basically be a 6-6 six, six most of the time with Vigilance, because if we've got three or more legendary creatures, which is very easy for us to meet, we are gonna have a 6-6 six, six for just four mana. Pay one a green tap, like top six cards of the library, really legendary, get it in your hand, the rest go into the bottom. And also on the back side of this though, we can cast this as the Ring Heart Crest, enters the battlefield, which is a creature type, Tap to add a green, spend this mana only to cast a creature spell of the chosen type or a legendary creature spell. Yeah, basically it's gonna help us with all of our creatures because yeah, they're basically all legendary. Moving on, three and temporal gateway, a great way to cheat things into play. Pay four tap, put a sort permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield essentially. Just cheat it right into play. Don't pay its mana cost, a fantastic effect. Speaking of which, Weatherlight, another great artifact for us. This one's a vehicle, four or five flyer, whatever hits an opponent. Look at the top five cards of your library, reveal the store cards from among them and put that in your hand. Rest go bomb your library in a random order. It only costs three to crew, so three power to crew, I should say. But yeah, it's a great effect to not only get through on your opponents, but also to get more card advantage. Next up though, Hero's Podium, a fantastic effect. Each legendary creature control gets plus plus one for each other legendary creature you control. This can pump our creatures an absurd amount. And on top of that, Pay X, tap, look at the top X card of your library, the real legendary creature card, and then put it in your hand. Yeah, this is another great effect, another great, well, card advantage with also just a massive pump effect for our team. This can be game ending. Now we've already talked about some ways to potentially protect Nashi in combat, which can be very important for this deck. So let's talk about some other ones as well, like Gerard's Hourglass Pendant. We can flash this in for just one mana. It can stop players from getting extra turns, which is nice. On top of that, pay four, tap, exile it, return to the battlefield, tap all artifact, creature, enchantment, and land cards in your that put there from the battlefield this turn so you're able to bring things back if needed. Next up, Agent of the Shadow Thieves. Commander creatures you own have whenever this creature attacks a player. If no opponent has more life than that player, you get a counter on this creature, gains death touch and indestructible until out of turn. So again, Nashi can be protected in that way. Next up, Vorak Battlehorns. Basically a way to make Nashi unblockable because quick creature has trample, can't be blocked by more than one creature. And also Nashi has menace, so can't be blocked by two or more. So basically, yeah, you, you can't block it at all. Next up, we've got Grezlex, Ithalid Scholar. Whenever a creature control becomes a block, you may return to its owner's hand. Whenever one or more creatures you control, you'll combat your player, draw a card. So potentially a great value engine force comes to drawing a lot of cards. And on top of that, Nashi is ever blocked, we can just say, 
I don't want Nash to get taken out. Let's bring it back to the hand. Next up, Mask of Grizzle Brand. This can help us out in a lot of ways. Flying and lifelink, so we gain a lot of life when get Nashi through typically on at least one of our opponents. On top of that, whenever the crow creature dies, we pay X life or X its power. We do draw X cards. This can draw us a ton of cards as well. Moving on, Anara, Volvid's Familiar. As long as it's your turn, commander creatures you control have indestructible. So yeah, basically, hey, our commander creatures are gonna be indestructible. That means Nashi is indestructible. Nashi gonna swing freely. And then finally, we've got Raised by Giants. Commander creatures you own have base power and toughness 10-10. And are also giants. So yeah, now Jossie, Nashi's just a giant rat, but also it's a 10-10, so a lot harder to take out in combat. Moving on, let's talk about Self Mill, a fantastic component with this deck for our commander. Old Stake Fingers is a great card. When you cast this spell, reveal cards in the top of your library to reveal X creature cards. All those go into your graveyard. So yeah, we can just stash our graveyard with a ton of creatures that we can say, oh yeah, those legendaries in there. Yeah, Nashi, help us get those back out. On top of that, power times equal number of creature cards in your grave. So this can hit for a lot as well. Moving on, sign of the Hallister. It's gonna be a background that says, commander creatures you own have the first time you draw a card each turn. Instead of the top two, one goes in your graveyard, the other goes back on top of your library, then draw a card. So essentially, hey, just keep filling your graveyard with more and more legendaries and yeah, kind of curate what you're gonna be drawing. Next up, Sidisi Brood Tyrant. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, mill three cards. So there's some great mill for you to get more things in your graveyard. On top of that, whenever one or more creature cards is in your graveyard from your library, you get a 2-2 black zombie token. So that's nice as well. Then finally, Eloise Nephalius Luth. We've got a 4-4 human rogue. Whenever another creature control dies, investigate. So that's fantastic. Being able to say, oh, well, okay, I lost my creature, but also now I get a clue that allows me to draw some cards. On top of that, whenever you sacrifice a token, you surveil one. So another way to get more things in your graveyard as well. Next up, let's move on to tactic number six, advantageous, and talk about some more ways to generate some card advantage. And uh, yeah, Gretchen Ditchwillow helps out in multiple ways. Pay two, green, blue, draw a card, play land card from your hand on the battlefield, so not only drawing cards, but also ramp as well. Moving on, Weatherlight Completed. This is another fantastic vehicle. We've got both the Weatherlight and the Weatherlight Completed in this deck. Absolutely love it. If it's got four more Phyrexian counters on it, it's a Phyrexian creature in addition to its other types. Whenever your creature control dies, you put a Phyrexian counter on it. And then you draw a card if it's got seven or more on it. If it doesn't, you scry one. So yeah, again, creatures dying can really generate us a lot of value. Next up, Cosima, God of the Voyage, a 2-4 god that says, beginning of your upkeep may exile. If you do, it gains whenever a land is mouthful under control. If it's exiled, you may put a voyage counter on it. If you don't, it, it can actually put it back into play with X counters on it and draw X cards. So yeah, the number of voyage counters on it can really just give you a huge, huge windfall of cards. Next up, Gadwick the Wise, and speaking of which, in this ETBs, you're gonna draw X cards based on the amount of mana that you put into that X. On top of that, if you cast some blue spells, you can tap down your opponent's permanents, which is nice as well. But yeah, just in general, a giant X spell. Then we've got Yisan the Wanderer Bard, pay two and a green, tap on a verse counter on it, go tutor for a creature, kind of like Instrument of the Bards, but this time, you're getting that creature directly into play based on the number of counters. So yeah, have fun with that getting more and more value. Speaking of value, Gonti you can get us value from our opponents. ETBs, basically, get the top four cards opponent's library we can just steal one of those essentially and cast it later by paying mana of any color essentially and also on top of that gandhi's a 2-3 death touch so a fantastic blocker and attacker as well i've got nomada prime evil warden a 3-4-3 three, three, to make creature opponent controls would die exile instead when you create a sapling token so yeah we can make a massive sapling army with this on top of that we can utilize them in multiple ways pay green sacrifice a sampling it's going to get plus two plus two until turn or pay one to black sacrifice two samplings draw a card so yeah a great draw engine for us as well Next up, Rashmi Attorney's Crafter. Whenever we're casting spells, essentially the first spell we cast each turn, we the top card of your library. If it's you know less than that card, if it's not a land, we get to actually cast that card for free. If it's the, the exact same amount or more, essentially, we are going to actually be able to just get that right into our hand. We're basically drawing it, essentially. We're not technically drawing it by magic rules, but we're basically just getting it right into our hand. Next up, Shadowheart, Dark, Justicar. Pay one a black tap, sacrifice, sacrifice another creature, draw X card to X the creature's power. This can be a fantastic way to draw a ton of cards. I mean, sorry, Rick Smithies, but just thinking about sacrificing that, that could already be a ton. On top of that, like Heroes Podium, obviously can pop our creatures a ton. There's a lot of ways to draw a lot of cards with something like this. And yeah, even just sacrificing a creature with three power is still a good amount of value for this. 
Moving on, Azami, no power, but a lot of value. A tap and untap wizard, you control, draw a card. Of course, Azami is definitely not the only wizard in this deck. We definitely have others as well, but yeah, Azami is a great draw engine for us. And yeah, if we've got some wizards in play, we can draw a lot of cards throughout the game with this. Then there's Tatiova Benthic Druid. We are in green. We've got a ton of ways to ramp and uh, land ramp with that. Whenever you land in your under your control, you gain life and draw a card. A great way to pet our life total and also just draw through our deck in absolutely no time. Speaking of it, which, one of my favorite cards from my childhood, Arcanist the Omnipotent, tap, draw three cards. Also, we can bounce it back to our hand if we absolutely need to protect it. But yeah, a great repeatable way to draw a ton of cards. What's not to love about that? But then we've talked about our plan. Let's talk about some ways to throw a wrench into our opponent's plan. So let's move on to attack number seven, smash it all. Alchemist Retrieval, a great way to either protect one of our own things for just one mana by bouncing back to our hand or bounce one of our opponent's things for two mana. Moving on, pigs, curse of the swine, exile exar creatures, replace them with two two boars. So yeah, sorry you had these giant creatures up there. Now they're tiny little two twos. It's also a great way to somewhat protect Nashi a bit more, especially if we've got a lot more ways to actually power Nashi up. Moving on, depart the realm, a great way to bounce a permanent. Very surprisingly, we can foretell it and then also just cast it for just a single blue mana. Moving on, Urtai Resurrected, a legendary creature that can help us out. Flash when enters the battlefield, choose up to one. Counter target spell, active ability or triggered ability, its controller draws a card. Short target creature or planeswalker, its controller draws a card. So a great flexible way. Speaking of flexible, Venzer Shaper Savant, nearly the same thing. Flash ETBs return target spell or permanent to its owner's hand. So I guess I should say somewhat similar, but still can help deal with a lot of things. Next up. Aether Gale, speaking of dealing with a lot of things, five mana, bounce six permanents. It's a great value to just wipe out what we need to wipe out. Then there's Mystic Confluence, a very flexible spell. Choose three, you can choose the same mode more than once, essentially. We're going to either counter target spells, control or pays three, return to our creature source hand or draw a card. So yeah, any combination of those can be very, very, very effective. Then there's Kyrie the Swirling Sky. This is a great death trigger. When it dies, you choose one, return any number of target non-land permanents with total mana value six less than hands. So um, just a quick note, if you're playing against a token deck, um, buy buy all of your opponent's tokens. On top of that, mill six cards and return to two target instant end of source cards you grab your hand. So another great way to get a lot of value out of this. Then there's Kago the Titanate. When this ETBs, it can fight to one target creature you don't control. So this can take out pretty much, not anything I should say, but a lot of things. It's got seven power. When it attacks to target artifact or enchantment flying, defending player controls. On top of that, we can bounce a human back to our hand to give Coglin indestructible as well. So yeah, a great flexible card that can help us out in a lot of situations. Then there's Decree of Pain. Hey, do you want to draw a ton of cards and wipe the board? Go for it. These are all creatures that can't be regenerated. Draw a card for each creature so this way, or we can cycle away for five mana to go all creatures minus two, minus two until I've turned. And then finally, in Garrick's Wake, nine mana, but again, we've got plenty of ways to ramp. Hey, let's destroy all the things that we don't own, essentially. We're just going to destroy all of our opponent's creatures, all of our opponent's Planeswalkers, have fun, swing through with your creatures with that. But now let's so move on to tactic number eight and talk about some really heavy hitting cards. First up, we've got Jordal Manvali Recluse, a one two human druid that says, whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a two two green cat creature token. We've got a ton of ways to draw a lot of cards. We can get a lot of cats with this. On top of that, pay four green green until I'm turning creature control, base power number is XX for X number of cards in your hand. Again, we've got a lot of ways to draw a lot of cards. So we can make our hand massive and we can easily turn our creatures into absolute monsters with something like this. Speaking of monsters, Dragon Throne of Targ here. Group creature as defender and pay to tap other creature control, get trample and plus X plus X until I've turned Rex this creature's power. Um, yeah, this can be massive. Again, just picture like a Rick Smithies with this on it and being like, oh, okay, yeah, I got my army. All of a sudden, plus 12, plus 12 and trample all your creatures. Good luck opponents. And then finally, we've got Gisa, Glorious Resurrector. We can actually have our opponents do the dirty work for us. If a creature pro controls would die, we exile instead. Game of your upkeep, put all creature cards, exile Gisa on the battlefield under control, you get decayed. So now we can just say, you know, your creatures are now mine. Yeah, they're kind of like temporary because of that decayed, but still I can take advantage of all those creatures, swing away with them, and uh, yeah, take you out with your own creatures. But now we've talked about every single one of the non-land cards in this deck, let's quickly go through some great lands in tactic number nine. First up, we've got Access Tunnel. Tap for Achilles or pay three. Tap target creature with power three or less can't be blocked this turn. We get Nashi, power three. So yeah, making Nashi unblockable can be huge. Then there's Rogue Passage. Basically just pay one more mana for that exact same effect, but now any of our creatures can be unblockable. It's gonna be a great way to protect again Nashi or again, get any of our creatures through to hit for a lot of damage. Again, just picture Rixmethese coming through. I don't know why I keep mentioning Rixmethese, but I love that card. <laughs> yeah, just getting through a 12, that can be fantastic as well. 
But yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I hope that you enjoyed the deck tech. If you are interested in the deck, make sure you check out that deck list link in the description below. Comment below with your thoughts on this Nashi build. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. 